Hello everyone, welcome to the first Hispanic Heritage Month virtual art exhibit, a collaboration between El Paso Community College and the El Paso Art Association. My name is Carla Zanelli, I'm the Executive Director at the EPAA, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. Thank you to EPCC's Diversity and Inclusions programs for inviting us to celebrate Hispanic culture through art. Thank you to the 26 artists that have submitted work to celebrate the past, present, and the future. So thank you everyone, enjoy the artwork, and stay well. Samantha Ballantyne. I started this piece called Sweet three months after the EP shooting because I wanted to do a piece that feels euphoric in a way to reclaim the beauty and peace of the city. I used acrylic paint and canvas paper for this piece. I began painting the girl then developed the background over time and adding stars using the toothbrush technique. Balance and unity was important in creating such a colorful piece. I enjoy using neon colors because it reminds me of childhood and healing our inner child. In this instant, healing was most definitely needed. I wanted to show that no matter what, our city is still beautiful, our heritage is beautiful, and that the people like the girl in this photo who have Mexican parents are still beautiful, powerful, and valid. Felicia Barraza. In my art, I find two main purposes, expression and communication, all of which I use for uniting the community. Taquitos de Media Noche was a commission piece I made in Chihuahua for a taquero who lives near the house I stay in when I visit. I did this as a passion project and didn't charge the taquero, but instead traded the physical piece for four Odeña de Tacos. Para Estudiar, an ink and sharpie illustration that I made as a base inspiration for a project I was collaborating and being commissioned for an EPCC. It ties with the Mexican and Hispanic heritage because the piece is about the travesty people who live in Ciudad Juarez have to go through in order to be able to either study or work in the U.S. I asked a friend who I used to cross the bridge with at mornings to go to high school as a model. It is a situation ties to the Hispanics and the region and a constant occurring that shouldn't be dismissed. Cesar Barraza, an award-winning artist, Cesar has a passion for many subjects and themes that inspire his work. Cesar paints the beautiful landscapes of the Southwest with rich layered colors. His figurative work always brings out the beauty in his subjects, whether a lovely young lady or musicians enjoying music. Among other subjects, Cesar paints beautiful, colorful, abstract designs. Caesar enjoys using a variety of mediums in his work, including pastel, watercolors, oils, and acrylics. Folklore Mexico shows a scene of merriment at a church reunion where folks sell crafts and food and they dance. Proud Rider was inspired by a statue in Juarez where the vaquero is riding proud, followed by many, many bulls. Rio Concho is exquisite in the evening sunset of a blue.
Amy Brown. As I aged, my circle of friends became more culturally diverse. Some of my Hispanic friends wear the pride of their culture etched across their skin. Many have symbols and representations of the beliefs and traditions they hold dear, tattooed as reminders and messages to all that can see them. When I think of that gesture, I feel the marriage of cultures past brought into the present and am appreciative that my friends share their connection to their culture with me and those interested enough to ask about their body art. Dave Brown. Some 50 years ago, my grandfather, who was an accomplished landscape photographer, taught me the fundamentals of photography. Ever since then, I have been striving to refine and improve my command of the craft. Now in constructing my images, I work to bring out not just the obvious details, but work to delve deeper to capture the emotion in that instant and to provide the experience of being there. This digital image representing Day of the Dead is a simple altar incorporating kalakas, or a figure of a skull or skeleton, enjoying life in their fancy clothes along with the marigolds, capturing the personality of Dia de los Muertos. Robert Dozal. Robert is a multimedia award-winning artist whose portraits and landscapes range from realistic to expressionistic in style. Robert, a retired art teacher, has for many years inspired and nurtured students to bring out their love and talent for art. E.P. Shades, E.P. Strong is symbolic of the strength and perseverance of El Pasoans, who when faced with great tragedy continue to move forward stoically but also with hope for a brighter future and a more united community. His painting, In La Cochina, celebrates the center of the home filled with traditional foods and a beautiful color serape and the warmth of giving. Dia de los Muertos combines a decorative iconic skeleton with a realistic portrait. Robert's work can be seen at the Robert Dosal Fine Arts Gallery in San Elizario. Terence Flores. He never really expected to become a fine arts painter when he was immersed in carpentry and construction. But in the summer of 2016, he found himself experimenting with enamels, usually used for industry, and ideas led him quickly into developing his own bold, distinctive landscape style. Artist Terence Flores has a unique talent and distinctive style for painting. Terence uses enamel paint to create vibrant, multi-layered artworks that often reflect El Paso's finest landmarks. His unique style is whimsical and fun, yet masterful. 
Terence is often inspired by the beauty around him and often paints landscapes of El Paso and of our beautiful region. The beauty of a cactus blooms as a little teal house, showing the vibrancy of a simple setting. Chico's Tacos and El Chuco style is sure to please a hungry appetite. Jean Holzenthaler. Jean moved to El Paso in 1991 from Connecticut. She taught pre-K at Isleta ISD until her retirement in 2005. Since then, she has focused on her own colorful artwork using a variety of media. As an award-winning artist, her paintings and collages are often responses to current events, as well as beautiful flowers and seascapes. Her artistic style is bright and colorful, curvy and swirly. Her 3D painted strips add to poured acrylic backgrounds are unique to her creative spirit as in Mexican flag colors. Traditional Mexican paper flowers abstracted using bright colors to create a fun and festive painting. And Adobe Adobe is lovely in its simplicity, showcasing this traditional style home. All hold tribute to rich Hispanic traditions that we celebrate today. Maria Ibarra. I was born in Ciudad Juarez and I studied art at UT Brownsville in South Texas. I've been a painter all my life and now I teach and paint. My primary medium is acrylic on canvas, but also do pencil and charcoal drawings. Initially, I painted landscapes, florals, wildlife, and portraits. Now I paint images of the Raramari Tarahamara, a tribe from Mexico. My paintings are representations of the Raramari's humble daily life. As a descendant of the Rara, Raramari on my father's side, I have long desired to give a voice to my people. Through my paintings, I bring awareness to the community's social issues and struggles. I want to acknowledge their contributions in maintaining our shared identity, culture, art, and roots. Hopefully, my humble contribution through my paintings conveys a message to the people of the world. in Charegui. This work was highly inspired by Arte de Gustavo on Instagram using Mexican symbols, bright colors, and more detail on the bottom, as in more things going on below as opposed to the top. I started with a reduced brown acrylic layer, then it went in with oil paint. An important element to me was adding my own touch to spice up another artist's style by including my makeup and pet snail. I'm going for a very Mexican vibe with my choice of colors and greenery, almost reminiscent of a Frida Kahlo. I think this piece shows my ability to use and balance colors, as well as ability to paint semi-realistically for my first time ever using oil paint.
Paul Maxwell. After almost five decades, Paul focused on his creative passions in engineering and sciences. Paul returned to the world of art full-time in 2012, painting from his southern New Mexico studio in Santa Teresa. Paul focuses on landscapes and local subjects using acrylic paints, a new medium for him. Paul draws inspiration from life and scenes around him in our unique desert southwest. Indian girl with many hats, a young Tarahumara Indian girl strolls through the marketplace of the border town of Palomas, Mexico. Bracera Embrazada, a lettuce field worker in Mesilla Valley, just north of the Mexican border. And New Patriot, a young Guatemalan girl newly arrived in a shelter in southern New Mexico, not far from the border of Mexico. She has little more than the clothes on her back as she clutches a newfound toy. Her eyes say it all. Candy Mayer. As an award-winning artist, Candy creates landscapes and still lifes of the borderland in pastels, acrylics, pen and ink, and mixed media collage. She is often known for her scenes of El Paso's landscapes and architecture and themes from the Hispanic culture, including the Mexican holiday, Dia de los Muertos, where colorful, happy figures celebrate both life and death. Candy has also created two Loteria games that she designed with numerous Mexican symbols to be enjoyed by young and old. Her religious themes include Guadalupe, Saints and Angels, Frida with Monkey, Talavera Katrina, and Terracotta Katrina are statuesque with colorful Mexican frocks. Carmen Navarre. Carmen is an award-winning multimedia artist whose mission is to create a place of peace and beauty in a stress-filled world. Carmen's stylistic and diverse work finds meaning through artistic inquiry, observation, and embraces stylistic diversity. She draws from her combined knowledge of Mexican-American and Spanish roots with religious traditions. My Patched Up Heart and Love in the Chaos is a series of art pieces that depict the financial woes of COVID-19 and the brokenness of a divided society caused by closed-minded people of different cultures. I used shredded financial paper, she says, to show the burden of money struggles and the universal symbol of hearts to signify that love is always the answer. Frida and her flowers represents the idea of women who struggle and finally wake up to their own potential and start giving themselves their own flowers because they value themselves and recognize their self-worth. Lizzie Ochoa. Lizzie is a multimedia visual artist who enjoys creating custom portraits, murals, illustrations, photography, graphic design, wax figures, sculptured portraits, and video productions. Her style ranges from realism, surrealism, to a more illustrative style. She received her master's in information science at the University of North Texas and her BA in art from St. Edwards University. 
Lizzie's style is unique with an abundance of color and drama, whether painting a day of, of the dead theme, Frida Kahlo, a puppy or cat, or an out of this world kitty. Lizzie's art is always fun and grand. Lizzie's portraits representing Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, are out of this world. Ramiro Ordonez. As a high school art teacher and an award-winning artist, Ramiro has been inspiring students to develop their creativity and talent for many years. Three of his gifted students appear in this show. Ramiro states, My influences are first and foremost everything I see, feel, and experience. My subject matter is people. Everyone I see is a potential painting. I use traditional materials, from acrylic paint on cradle board to watercolors on paper. My work mixes everyday people with traditional and cultural patterns, clothing, and scenes in a creative, fun, and expressive manner. Punto's Soledad Cactus Garden were inspired by El Pasoans and the connection they have with the beautiful son of El Paso. Lynn Arona. All three paintings are from my imagination, not copies from photos. I was thinking in terms with maybe somewhere there might be Mexican or Spanish cities that might have looked like the ones I've created here. The plaza could look like somewhere in Spain with flower boxes and definite building structures and awnings. The village is more home-like with stacked colorful buildings in a rural area setting. City Vendors looks like it could be Mexico City. The buildings have a very old look and style and structure. All have clothing that is unique to the Mexican people. The shawls, long skirts, hairstyles, flower vendors, and donkey carts are what I think of as old Mexico. They are the most colorful people to paint for me. Gabriel Rodriguez. Born and raised in El Paso, Texas, Gabriel C. Rodriguez is a self-taught artist who interprets the world through what he calls a cartoon lens, or in other words, how a child would interpret an event based on the world they've lived in, whether it's illustrating scenes from his beloved city, illustrating historical places or events, or venturing into the realm of surrealism. Gabriel's knack for cartooning his pieces brings a feel of innocence in the chaotic world we live. Gabriel has participated in a more poor Juarez art auction, various last Thursday art walks, pop-up art shows in El Paso, Los, Los Angeles, and Austin. Zoot Suit Riot illustrates the colorful energy of a chaotic day.
Stephanie Romano. I was born and raised in Colorado, but moved to El Paso, Texas via the Army. We loved it here so much that we stayed. The culture, the people, the warmth of community and family is what keeps us here. I love my mountains of Colorado, but El Paso is home. I am a working and practicing artist. I have been an art teacher in public schools for over 20 years, and I am now teaching art to five elementary schools in the Socorro District. My mother once said, Stephanie, you are weird and wonderful. This has guided my artwork and stayed with me through all aspects of life. Whimsy and Kitsch are my best friends and muses in my work. Frida Kahlo is one of my artist idols, and you will see many Fridas represented in my work. Dia de los Muertos is a big theme for me too. I love the meaning and reason for the event. Laughing at death and honoring our deceased to me are very integral to everyday lives and life in general. Bert Saldana. Born and raised in El Paso, Texas, Bert, an award-winning artist, has been painting all of his adult life and has been fortunate to make his livelihood in art. He has a BA in Fine Art from the University of Texas at El Paso. Bert has also studied museum exhibit design at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. Among his long list of accomplishments, Bert worked as a muralist for the El Paso Museum of Art from 1976 to 1980. Olé and Española were inspired by the elegance of Spanish dancers, and Las Comadres was inspired by the traditions of the indigenous Mexican people. You can see these lovely works in person at the Bert Saldana Art Gallery in San Elizario. Crystal Sapien. Crystal, a local author and photographer, submitted three photographs that represent important things to her life on the border. El Sabor was inspired by the delicious food and what a great joy it is to see a child indulging in a traditional Mexican dish. Aplauso, reunited at a big family party. A family celebrates a reunion after being separated by two borders. And Dreamers was inspired by a sad yet hopeful day. A view of a sunset from inside a building from the eyes of a child waiting to be reunited again with family and start a new life. Celeste Sarabia, my art strives to capture and reveal personalities through color and expression. My role as the artist is to let people be themselves and then be perceptive enough to capture their complexities through paint. I want my subjects to appear familiar and relaxed. The background of my paintings are the subject's actions, emotions, and subtle body language turned into vibrant color. I call this their aura. Capturing a person's aura takes time, so it's important to sit down with each subject and listen to their story. 
I choose colors that I feel capture the subject while we have a one-on-one -on -one session. Celeste portraits represent the strength of people through perseverance and adversity. From leaving the comforts of home behind, Zuara wants to prosper and make her family proud. Gabriel finds that being compassionate to all has given him strength. Edgar knows who he is now and is proud of the man he's become. Itzel Silva. I took a picture of the Tarahamaras on my trip to Yochochi last summer and all the beautiful nature, plants, and flowers. I grew up in Juarez and a lot of the Tarahamara live there. They sell their crafts. I've always seen them as great people and since that part of the world is my culture, I wanted to show in an art piece something that represents my cultural roots. Madre de Chihuahua represents my respect as well as my admiration to my culture and my need to make this part of me, because maybe I was born in the U.S., but my heart and blood will always be Mexican. And instead of hiding it, I want to show the world how proud I am that my ancestors were Tara Hamaras. Maria Socorro Munoz. Maria is a gifted local artist who embraces diversity of style and subject. She has been in the art scene for many years and has shown her work in many galleries in El Paso. Maria has a lovely collection of her tablos that she created a number of years ago as a devotion to the past. Sweet Fruit in a Basket is a colorful still life representing the abundance of goodness life has to offer. Maria always shines with her portrait work, here depicting a colorful Frida Kahlo and a lovely lady in white. Pamela Vigo Sanchez. I am an El Paso artist with a BA in art from the University of Texas at El Paso. In addition to being an artist, I am also an avid equestrian. I am always around horses, whether drawing them onto paper or saddling up my own horse. Sometimes I combine my art and my horsemanship into one. I create works of art with my horse Indy. His abstract paintwork is the backdrop to my objective drawings. Lately, we've used our skills to aid various social justice movements. My heritage, my culture, and my family reside in Puerto Rico. As a Puerto Rican raised by Puerto Rican parents, Indy and I must do what we can to make sure La Isla del Encanto is not forgotten. Pamela's work embodies her strong feelings about U.S. and Puerto Rico's relations. Pamela's complete artist statement about each artwork can be found on the EPAA website.
Linda Wally Rias. I like to try many different art styles, including oil, acrylic, watercolor, resin, metal, beading, and jewelry. Some are more successful than others, but I enjoy trying them all. Flowers in Casa Yard depicts an abundance of lush colors found in nature beside a traditional adobe home. This painting was done in oil. Trees in Copper is a gorgeous display of craftsmanship and art. A wonderful array of trees from the seasons of the year cluster together amongst the relief of copper and glass. Done in metal and alcohol ink, the view from the patio looks out to the blue sky and the blue water off in the distance. Janet Whittaker. I am a beginner at photography and a new resident of New Mexico. At the time of this photo at last year's Dia de los Muertos, I had been living in Las Cruces for less than six months, moving here from the Midwest. I did take many pictures of the altars and people painted and dressed up at Mesilla Plaza that day. This beautiful young woman graciously allowed me to take her picture. In black and white, the picture looks timeless. What year could this picture have been taken? The entire day and night were a wonderful experience and an introduction to my new home and its culture. Painted faces and bright eyes are mom and daughter. The child was definitely enjoying herself and had the darkest sparkling eyes. On behalf of the El Paso Art Association, I would like to thank EPCC's Diversity and Inclusions Program Director Olga Chavez, Associate Chloe King, and Coordinator Lee Vasquez. Thank you for inviting us to celebrate Hispanic heritage through art. Thank you to all 26 artists for participating, and thank you for viewing the virtual exhibit to celebrate Hispanic heritage. Stay well and stay awesome.